Why is stem cell therapy so seemingly controversial still in this, in mm -hmm. this country? Why is that? You know, if you separate the hype from the hope, the American public is now coming to the point of saying, wait a minute, what's been going on? Where did we start? Where are we now? What's the hope for our families? What is there in our lifetime or in our children's lifetime? I'll do a timeline. Scott, let's mm -hmm. take a minute and do that. I think it's interesting. Mm -hmm. It might answer your question. In 1960, James Till at the University of Toronto announces that he has identified the embryonic stem cell. And uh, we know that the wheels of medicine turn slowly, right? 37 mm -hmm. years pass, and suddenly we have a piece of information about stem cells. A professor <laughs> by the name of Ian Wilmot from Edinburgh University has announced that he has cloned a sheep. Mm -hmm. And her name was Dolly. <laughs> Dolly has since bought the farm. She got, her whole body got involved in, with uh, tumors. It's one of the side effects of embryonic stem cells, one mm -hmm. of the reasons it hasn't proceeded more than it has. And then I'm going to take you to later in that same year, and this might answer your question. Christopher Reeve, somebody mm -hmm. we admired and loved, Mr. Superman, uh, goes before Congress of the United States and asks for money for embryonic stem cell research. The world sees a face on this ailment mm -hmm. of his, which is spinal injury. Now he's being coached by mentors who are embryologists through no fault of Christopher Reeve. He is told what to say and what he says to us turns out to be inaccurate at the time but now, 12 years later, I'll let you make that decision. Because what he said was cures for MS and Parkinson's and spinal injury and heart failure and diabetes would come from an embryonic stem cell. Had he been coached to say that all of these diseases, all of the above, will be cured with stem cells and not designated that they had to be embryonic mm -hmm. stem cells, we wouldn't have been embroiled in this whole, this whole battle. Now you can take the religion and the morality and put it aside for the discussion. In 1998, an event happens at the University of Wisconsin that has great import to the research community. A scientist by the name of James Thompson announces that he has for the first time identified isolated the embryo. It has great importance to the research community. It's a piece of the puzzle they've been waiting for. And now we move forward to 2007 when James Thompson, working with Shenye Yamanaka, a scientist from Japan, announced that they have found a new stem cell. A new stem cell that avoids all of the downside and all the negatives of an embryonic stem cell. They say it is the best of two worlds. It's called the induced pluripotent stem cell that reverts back from your skin cells almost to the point of becoming an embryo, embryonic stem cell but does not actually hmm. make that leap. So you don't have any of the side effects. Now, Dr. Robert Lanza, who I mentioned, the scientist, says it's like turning lead into gold. Dr. Ian Wilmot, who Dolly was uh, associated as the pre uh, developer of Dolly the Sheep, mm -hmm. now makes a statement that he will no longer pursue embryonic stem cell research. He said, I don't have a moral issue with it. I don't have an ethical issue. I just think we have found a better way. It's the best of the two worlds, like I mentioned earlier. And he still to this day encourages uh, the, uh, people, uh, scientists using uh, induced pluripotent stem cells. And just looking at embryonic stem cells, why have they not been successful? Why to this date is there not a documented success in any country of the world? Three factors. They're all scientific. They're not moral. They're not religious. Number one, an embryonic stem cells reject it. The body rejects it as a coming from a foreign source. source. Mm -hmm. 
So therefore, you'd have to be on an immune suppressive drug for the rest of your life. We don't think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Number two, they create tumors. That's known. That's the main factor. And number three, because they're such a particularly potent stem cell and so prolific, they can migrate to other parts of the body where the scientists didn't want them to go. Now, in, in contrast to that, the very same diseases that Christopher Reeve told us about, those very same diseases are today being healed successfully in 3,800 FDA trials. 1,675 of those trials are using your own bone marrow stem cells. There has been only one embryonic trial approved, and it terminated the first year. There is one other for macular degeneration, and 3,800 adult stem cell trials. The very same diseases that we were told would only be cured with an embryonic stem cell are being cured today. Right here in Chicago, at Northwestern University, at the Feinberg School of Medicine, 17 of 20 MS patients, remitting, relapsing MS patients, are totally disease-free for five full years. Mm. Wow. Dr. Richard Burt is the doctor. He's also treating, using the same approach, resetting the immune system for treating diabetes 1, lupus, scleroderma, and MS, and, there, and 20, uh, 20 more diseases. He's using the same formula. It, that's the ideal thing in medicine. If one thing can, can work on one uh, disease, how could it work on other mm -hmm. diseases of the same family? Mm -hmm. And in this case, immune diseases.